Chris Lynn McNair's dedication to nurturing faith and fostering authentic connections is evident in her dynamic ministry, which goes beyond the pulpit. Chris Lynn has been featured on OWN TV's Love and Marriage Detroit. She is deeply committed to uplifting others through her mentorship program for women and a variety of impactful activities aimed at making a positive difference in the lives of those she serves. Welcome to the stage, Chris Lynn McNair. Amen. It's, it's such an honor to be home <laughs> to the amazing pastors of this house, my spiritual parents, Dr. Creflo and Taffy Dollar. I love and appreciate you. If you want some pastors that's going to rock with you to the end, get you some dollars, okay? Because <laughs> they have fought with us in our marriage. They have fought for me personally, when I didn't believe in myself, they believed in me, and I'm so grateful, so, so grateful for you all. And I see a couple of other family members in the house really quickly, y'all. I need my 45 minutes, so I'm gonna go real fast. But to who I call my mentor, my other mom, Pastor Cynthia Brazelton, thank you for all that you do. Thank you, I love you and Antoinette. I love y'all, y'all a family. Of course, my mother is in the house, my actual birth, birth mama. <laughs> my sister, my dad, my stepmom, thank you all for being here. And anyone who I didn't shout out, you all know that you're in my heart. But most importantly, I cannot start this message without honoring my husband, my support, my best friend. Y'all, they called me and said, you know, do you want a product table? And I was like, no, I just want to get in, do what I'm supposed to do. And he said, are you crazy? He did everything. <laughs> he ordered extra product, organized everything. I was just, I'm so grateful for you. It's nothing like having you in my life, and I'm so appreciative. My mother in love is here as well. This is Mildred McNair, of course, some sisters from Alpha Kappa Alpha, but more, more importantly, like, I call them my big sisters, but <laughs> they're here, Kalisha, Petrina, my best friend, Laren. I love y'all so much. All right, you guys can take your seats. I want to get started this morning. Let's pray really quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence in this house this morning. We thank you most importantly for the word that you have prepared for every person in every single one of these seats. God, I ask that you speak that you begin to open their hearts, you open their minds. God, this is your seed. I've studied for this message, God, but it's nothing until you breathe on it, you move through it. Lord God, you speak through me, think through me. God, this is yours. And so God, you know what every person came in this house needing and expecting, and I, I ask that you exceed their expectations this morning. In your son Jesus' name we pray, and everyone say amen. amen. When I was preparing for this message, um, What's so funny is um, I was thinking about bloom, and you start thinking about seasons changing. You start thinking about spring, flowers, colors, and things like that. And God dropped in my heart a particular story of a time where I wanted to be, what do y'all call it, a plant mom. I wanted to start growing plants. That's what everybody was doing on the gram, you know, so I wanted to do it too. I needed a new hobby, and so I wanted to start growing plants. But here's the issue. I do not have a green thumb whatsoever. <laughs> My husband buys me flowers and they will sit on the table. I will not water them. I, will, I won't even look twice at those things. And for Valentine's Day, and a matter of fact, he bought me this big bouquet of flowers. It had balloons tied around it. It had all this decorative stuff. Y'all, that thing just sat on the table with the balloons, with the ties. I didn't think anything about it. You know, you got people who cut the stems, do it all diagonally, spread and bloom the flower. I'm not doing all of that. I'm so sorry, I love you, but that's just not my gift, but I wanted to still be a plant mom, you know? So someone was like, well, we're gonna test you out. My friend, she loves plants, so she gave me a plant, and she was like, if you could take care of this, then this may be something you can do. But don't go out there and start buying all these big plants like everybody doing, they all die. And so she gave me this plant, and I'm thinking, okay, let me go to Google, and let me figure out how to, 
how to take care of this plant. I need this thing to survive. So I go to Google and I'm looking up on how to water it, how much sunlight does it need? And you know, what do I need to do in order to make it thrive? And so I get this plant and I call myself putting it in the right amount of light. And this particular plant didn't need a lot of water, so they were like, spritz it. So I'm like, let me go ahead and spritz the thing, you know? So I'm spritzing the plant and I'm just, y'all, listen, it got bad. I started talking to the thing. You will live and not die. Listen, I'm gonna prove. <laughs> I'm gonna prove to you that you are gonna live today. Are you not gonna prove me wrong? You are gonna live. And so I'm just like all excited because I, I started to see a little stem sprout and I'm like, oh snap now. I, I'm gonna take care of this plant. I'm about to get another one. And then one day I started walking by it and I was like, it looked a little crispy. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not so sure what's going on with this thing. Um, so I was like, all right, so maybe you need a little more water. So I a little spritz a little water and and then I'm like, okay, we're gonna pray over it, you're gonna live, and by the next day, it was looking real crispy. And so about, I'll say about a weekend, the thing started drying up completely. <laughs> no matter how much water I put in it, it just started to look as if it was dying. So I called my friend and I'm concerned now. I'm like, listen, now I did everything that Google told me to do with this plan, <laughs> and it's still dying on me. And she asked me a question, she said, well, did you think about repotting it? And I said, well, who are you talking about repotting? Where did this come from? I didn't see that on Google. <laughs> and she said, this is the last resort because maybe the plant has grown to its capacity and now it needs to be repotted because it can no longer receive the nutrients that you're pouring into it. You've taken care of the plant, but the plant doesn't have room enough to grow. And when I started looking up repotting, it says that when a plant is stuck in limited space, it enters what is called survival mode. In this limited space, the roots don't have enough room to absorb what they need, which causes the plant to suffer. But when the plant is repotted, it is now able to receive the capacity of what's being poured into it. And so what I believe, as God was telling me about my whole little planting situation, I believe that we are in a season of repositioning and replanting. I believe what God has ordained or appointed me here on this morning to say is that he desires to reposition you in this season. Because many of us have been in survival mode. We've just been living and existing, taking life as it hands us, and have not identified with who Christ has called us to be. And so we are trying to bloom, but the room that we're in is too small. The position that God has placed us in is too small. God says, I need to repot and reposition you so that you can step into my territory. I need you to know who you are and what you possess on the inside of you. You belong to me, and so you you gotta get out. You gotta get out of that pot. You gotta get out of that thing that's too limited because your roots are suffering. I know it's comfortable. And listen, you've been looking real cute and pretty, but muzzled. Listen, I'm telling you right now, you gotta remove the muzzle off of your mouth and know that you got power on the inside of you. And this pot, listen, this pot, I know it's comfortable. And I know you love it because that's where all your friends are. That's where everything that you recognize is all around you. But God says in this season, I want to stretch you into the unfamiliar. I need you to know that you are a supernatural being who, 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 who needs supernatural possessions, who has every supernatural inheritance. You are God's. And because you are God, I need you to know that there is so much more that's in store for you and you've been limited. Glory be to God. There was a um, saying I remember that used to say, bloom where you're planted. That ain't Bible. I, I don't think it's Bible. That ain't Bible. <laughs> because how you gonna bloom where you planted if where you planted is too small? I'm just saying. <laughs> so I don't know about you. I don't necessarily wanna bloom in a limited space. Expand my territory. I need you to show me 
that there is so much more that you have for me, whatever it is that I've been thinking and limiting myself to, God, stretch me out. That's what true blooming is about. Evolve my flowers. Show me who I am. Let's put some scripture on this thing. Let's go to Acts 3. Hallelujah. Let's go to Acts 3. Let's, let's talk about repositioning and what that looks like. My husband reminded me of this. My plant didn't come with a little card. But he said, you know, plants come with little cards, little steps that tell you about repotting. I was like, my plant didn't come with one. <laughs> but when I did look up the card, the first little step was to pull it out. <laughs> Pull the plant out. <laughs> I said, it's probably why I died. I didn't follow directions, but we're going to follow directions this morning because we're not going to die. We're going to live. <laughs> Glory be to God. And so Acts 3, I want to read it out of the Amplified version of the Bible, if we can pull it up and read it out of the Amplified. And I'm going to start with verse 1. There we go. Now, Peter and John, really quick before I start reading, just to give context, of where we are in the scripture. Uh, we're here in Acts chapter 3 when just a few blocks over in John, because I believe this is important because Peter above anyone else understands what it means to be repositioned. Because over in John, Peter was one of the disciples. He was one of the ones that were closest to Jesus, washed Jesus' feet. But he was also the one that denied Jesus three times. And so we move over from John because he also witnesses the ascension of Jesus. He's there at the tomb waiting for Jesus to return because I'm sure he had so much guilt and so, many, uh, so much shame in his heart because he denied one he considered to be close to him. And so we get over into Acts where the apostles, the, the disciples are waiting with eager expectation for the Holy Spirit, the promised Holy Spirit that Jesus had promised them. And so in Acts 1, they're in expectation. In Acts 2, they get to a place where they encounter Pentecost, and that is the coming of the Holy Spirit, where they start speaking in different languages and different tongues. And Peter himself actually is the one who preaches a message and converts 3,000. And so he understands what it means to be in a space where he was once denying and now he's called. And now he's in a space where he realizes that the grace of God is here to save me regardless of my actions or regardless of what I've done wrong. Now here I am called and I must show up because I have the Spirit of God that's on the inside of me. And so here in Acts 3 and 1, it says, now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer. The ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, when a certain man crippled from his birth was being carried along, who was laid each day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, so that he might beg for charitable gifts from those who entered the temple. So when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them, give me a gift. And Peter directed his gaze intently at him, and so did John, and said, look at us. And the man paid attention to them, expecting that he was going to get something from them. But Peter said, silver, gold, money, I do not have, but what I do have, that I give to you in the use of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Then he took hold of the man's right hand with a firm grip and raised him up. And at once his feet and ankle bones became strong and steady. And leaping forth, he stood and began to walk. And he went into the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. Let's go back to verse 1. Do we have it in the Amplified and not the Amplified Classic? Let's go back to verse 1. Here we have a man that is actually being carried. He's being carried. I need you to imagine the story and see what's going on. He is being carried to the gate, this place of prayer, but he's not going into the place of prayer. He is being carried to sit in front of the gate to beg. But what I want to draw your attention to this morning as we start this message, being repositioned to bloom, is that it says, now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer in the ninth hour. Let's go to the second verse. 
because I want to break this down. And it says, when a certain man crippled from his birth was being carried. Now, see, I have an English degree, so when it comes to grammar, I get all caught up and distracted. Because here in this particular message, and I actually like it in the amplified version better than the amplified classic, because it says that when he was being carried, it says where they used to lay him at the gate. Now, I want to draw your attention to something in English. Whenever you see a change in tense, the author is trying to draw your attention to a change in time frame. And so what's happening here in this particular scripture is he is being carried, present tense, to where he used to be laid, past tense. So there is a shift in time here in the midst of his transition. There is something occurring while he's being carried. Remember, he is not able to walk, he's just simply being carried. But there is a shift in time frame that has happened. And it's saying that he used to be laid at the gate while he's being carried, the gate called beautiful. Now I looked up the word beautiful because I'm trying to figure out this shift in time. Why are we using present and past tense in the same sentence? And so what I saw here was that the gate of the temple called beautiful in Greek is called horaios. And horaios is a Greek word meaning belonging to the right timing and season of beauty. Flourishing, fulfilled, and baby blooming. <laughs> and so it says here that the beautiful gate is a gate of right timing and right season. It's a gate of fulfillment and blooming. That's what the gate, listen, that's what I'm telling y'all what the Bible study says, but it also says that beauty in this particular translation, in this particular scripture, excuse me, is sometimes joined with the word charis, which when you put flourishing and the right timing together with grace, you get the movement of grace. And so the reason why the tense is changed here is that this man was being carried, but on the other side, he had Peter and John who now had the spirit on the inside of them. So they were now in the movement of grace. Yeah. Somebody's going to catch this. <laughs> yeah. And so what this means is when there's a movement of grace, there is a transition that occurs. And what happens is, it, it, it occurs when you're not working on your own. This man wasn't praying to be healed. This man was not speaking in tongues. This man didn't get up at 5 a.m. and say, hey, I need you to heal me today. He wasn't even thinking about his healing. He was being carried to his fulfillment. And that's what repositioning and grace means. You ain't even got to think about it. But through the grace of God, while you're in transition, I'm going to take you to your healing. I'm going to take you to the miracle. I'm going to take you to the blessing. It's in transition. He was simply just on his way to his everyday needs, his everyday beg, his everyday mediocre life. He was just on his way to his everyday situation. He was just being carried in his everyday issue. Oh, come on, okay. He was just being carried in his everyday depression. He was just being carried in his everyday anxiety. He was being carried in his everyday insecurity. He was on his way. And so the scripture says he was being carried to where he used to. What's going to happen in the movement of grace when it comes to blooming is you, <laughs> you're going to be on your way to work where you used to be an assistant. I just, <laughs> I'm just trying to show y'all how grace works. <laughs> Because Grace said, I don't need all your toiling and working. All I need for you to do is believe in Jesus. Because right next door, there is a promised Holy Spirit that has given you power on the inside of you to be more than what you limited yourself to be. You are on your way to killing yourself. But God, you are on your way where you used to be depressed. You are on your way where you used to be fed up. You are on your way where 
where you used to be overwhelmed. You are on your way where you used to be broke. But in the movement of grace, when you arrive, you found abundance. When you arrive, you found healing. When you arrive, you found Jesus. You're not just blooming, you're in a movement of grace. <laughs> we got to understand this. We're, we're not just flowers just waiting to, to bloom at appropriate times. I believe that when we connect with Jesus, then this is where our bloom occurs. When we lock in with Jesus, this is where we begin to grow. When we lock in with Jesus, this is how we overcome. When we lock in with Jesus, this is where we receive our healing. When we lock in with Jesus, I become more than what I expected. I will not live in survival mode because I know who I am. So let's continue. It says, so when he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking them for coins. Sometimes you can be in the midst of breakthrough and not even recognize the shift. <laughs> the shift was already taking place, but he was still looking for coins. And if I can be honest real quick, thank you, Holy Spirit. I just believe that's what's wrong with some of us. Is God said, I've already delivered you, but you're so used to coins <laughs> that you don't know what a breakthrough looks like. I've already, I've already carried you into abundance, but you're so used to broke that all you affiliate with is brokenness. And see, I've already delivered you but you so used to just throwing a temper tantrum that you don't know what true healing looks like. So your emotions have fooled you and made you thought that this is who you were. Tell the truth, because that's what you tell people. This is who I am. No, it's not. You are the righteousness of God. Stop waiting on somebody else to validate you through your pity party. You've already been approved through God. You only crying because you want somebody to pat you on the back. If you want attention, then you get the attention through God. Oh, I just want them to see. I just, I just want them to see. That's what you're telling yourself in that dark room because God said, I already gave you your healing. But you in the dark room saying, I just wish somebody would be there for me. I just wish somebody would come comfort me. I wish somebody would see me. And God said, I see you, baby. Can you just get up? I know who you are. I'm just waiting on you to recognize it. I know your name. <laughs> Waiting for somebody to validate what I've already approved. What, what? I'm ready for war this morning. I'm tired. Woo! I'm tired of the enemy <laughs> tricking his women. Oh, tricking God's women. <laughs> Woo! Let's go to scripture. I got 30 minutes. Verse 4, but Peter along with John stared at him intently and said, look at us. And the man began to pay attention to them eagerly exciting, expecting, excuse me, to receive something. But Peter said, silver and gold, I don't have that. I can't give you the money. I can't give you what you're looking for. But what I can give you, listen, I can just give you what I got. Side note, that's what you got to tell some people. I can just give you what I got. <laughs> and what I got is the power and authority of Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so with this power and authority, he said, now walk and go on walking. This is the part I want us to pay attention to. He said he then seized the man right hand. In some particular verses, it says he pulled him up. He pulled him out. And it says, once his feet and ankles became strong and steady, now watch his grace right here. Watch the movement of grace. He says, and with a leap, he stood up and began to walk. I'm going to repeat that sentence again. And with a leap, he stood up and began to walk. And he went into the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. But here's the thing I need y'all to understand. With a leap, he began to walk. Now, is that physically impossible? I mean, is that physically possible? Let me explain something to you. He was crippled since birth. That means he never knew how to walk. 
And so how you go from jumping to walking? <laughs> jumping and leaping typically requires a certain level of muscular development, coordination, and balance that only develops after a child learns to walk. He was unable to walk from birth, but he went from leaping to walking. This is what grace does. It physically made absolutely no sense for him to leap before he walked. Physical, your muscles cannot leap before they walk. I have a four-year-old son. He could not jump before he started walking. He wanted to jump all day long with his big sister. He wanted to get on a trampoline and bounce, but his legs would not give him the ability to do so. But this man has received the grace of God. Remember, he was not in expectation of his healing. He didn't even have it on his mind. The time had already shifted while his expectation was still on his crippled body. And yet he says that with a leap, Sometimes when the grace of God comes for you, you just got to leap. I don't have to learn to walk. I don't need to learn to walk. I've got the grace of God on my side. And so if anybody's telling you that you got to learn the law, baby, slow down. No, I'm in the supernatural. I move with God. I don't have to wait because with God on my side it doesn't make sense but I can leave before I walk and what I believe God is saying in the spirit right now is things that might have taken 10 years by the grace of God God said supernatural acceleration here's your leaping I'm gonna do for you in 10 days Things that you thought were going to take 20 years. God says, watch you leap in two days. Because you have tapped into my grace. You have tapped into my sufficiency. You have tapped into my provider. You have tapped into everything that you need. You have it on the inside of you. I just need you to lock in. I just need you to lock in. You, I just need you to lock in. You tapped into the provider now. See, listen, you've been, you've been mad because you felt like you were alone. Some of you all have been weeping because you felt like nobody was there to support you. Nobody's been there to have your back. Nobody's been there to push you. And you've been asking God, where am I going to get my network? When am I going to get my support system? Because I'm carrying everybody else. I'm carrying the children. I'm carrying my husband. I'm carrying everything. And I just need some time for me. And God says, here it is. Here's your support system. It's through the grace of the Almighty God that you are going to leap in this season. People are going to turn around and say, what happened to her? I don't even understand what happened. And all you can say is, but God. Now I understand 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. I didn't, I didn't really get it before. When Paul says, my grace is sufficient. <laughs> he said, I had a thorn in my flesh. And I asked God repeatedly, please remove this thing because it's hurting me. I know you hurt. And I know you tired. But God stepped in and told Paul, listen, my grace is sufficient. And Paul turned around and say, yeah, he said, my strength is more effective in your weakness. Because when you're weak, that's when I'm strong. When you're weak, that's when I have room to move. When you're weak, that's when I have the capacity to enlarge your territory. When you're weak, this is where I can step in and do more than what you expected. So you don't understand your weakness has been a barrier to my promises. I need you to understand because you've been, it's not because you're weak. You've been focusing so much on your weakness that you haven't been able to focus on me. And so here it is today. I'm breaking the barrier. I'm tearing down the walls of your weakness. They will no longer stop you from receiving the grace that I made available for you. God says, it's okay. It's okay to be broken. I know you've been trying to hide this part of you, 
because it hasn't looked pretty. This isn't a side that you want everybody to see because you're the strong one. Oh, Rabandi. You're the strong one, and you've been scared that people will talk about you because, oh, how this woman of God, the one who prays and goes to church every day, why is she the one that's so weak? How is this happening? See, that's why I don't go to church now, because she, them church people keep going through. No, 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 I'm not going through. I'm God, I'm elevating. Don't be fooled today. You may see my tears, but you don't understand that one thing that's different between me and you is that I serve a God, that when I cry, his strength steps in, that when I weep, I, I win. You don't understand that I serve a daddy, that when I'm broken, he heals me. I don't have to succumb to what's inside of me. That's trying to deplete me because I have a God that's determined to see me win in victory. I know who I am. I know who I am. This is. You shut up. I know who I am. I remember one day my husband told me, he said, You're a capacitor. And I was like, What is that? <laughs> he said, he's techie, so he said a capacitor is a device that basically plugs into the wall and it gives the switchboard <laughs> energy. And it's basically like a reserve bank. And so it's a device and it just basically plugs into the wall and it reserves all the energy. So when a switch is flipped or at the appropriate time, it releases that energy onto the switchboard. And God began to remind me of Ephesians 2 and 8 that says, for by grace we have been saved through faith. And what God was telling me, and this is very pivotal when it comes to the movement of grace and who we are as it pertains to blossoming, is that a capacitor is only as functional through its power source. And so grace, if we are saved by grace through faith, it says that we must be plugged consistently into grace. And so when we're plugged into grace, what happens is grace is just Jesus, y'all. And grace then gives all the energy into this device, which is faith. And so what happens when we believe the, the switch is flipped and all of that energy is released upon us. And so the reason why God, I believe, has given me this is because sometimes we forget how the movement of grace works. We forget that it ain't about anything that we do but just trusting and believing. It's not about anything that we need to work out and anything that we got to get done. But here it is. It's plugged into it. My faith, anytime I believe, my faith is automatically plugged into grace. And so grace then says, hey, I'm going to fuel, I'm going to give you power. And then in this, in, this, in, this, in this faith, in this transfer of righteousness, at any point you need it, I'll release the same amount of power that I hold upon you. But what tends to happen when it comes to living our everyday lives is we tend to, we do work because we did unplug from grace and plug into people. We start unplugging into ourselves. We start plugging into our insecurities. We start plugging into our emotions. And so the belief system works the same way regardless of what you plug into. And so if you're plugging it into insecurity, the same power that insecurity has, that power is going to transfer into you. And when you're plugging into brokenness, the same power that brokenness has, that power is going to transfer into you. And so it's just a faith transfer because many of us, that's why the repositioning is necessary because many of us have lost our faith in God and put our faith in people. 
And so you keep you keep wondering, that's why you got to move out of that pot, because you keep wondering when God is going to come and answer you and when God is going to move on your behalf. But God said, I need you to get up out of there and come over here, because over there you've been worried about everybody and everything else, and you're... <laughs> And your thinking is too limited because you want me to meet your needs by your expectations, but I'm trying to exceed them. And so you put your faith over here because you've been plugged into the wrong things. And so everything that's, stir everything that's stored up is not of me. It is of everything you feel you need. But I'm trying to reposition you to give you super abundantly above what you ever imagined or thought of. And so in this capacitor, what he's saying is, Plug back into me. If you wanted to know, that's the third step of, of replanting, is disturbing the roots. It's picking up those roots and spreading them out and realizing, man, I've been worried and plugged into the wrong things. And see, I've been rooted and positioned in, in my pain. I've been rooted and positioned in my hurt, my grief, my shame. I've been rooted and positioned in everything that I thought was going to help me. Y'all, this ain't nothing I'm, I'm, I'm talking about that I have not experienced it or experiencing. And so we get so deeply rooted in everything that we feel is okay because I'm still waking up in the morning. I'm still living life. I'm still, I'm still doing it. I'm still, I'm still happy. I'm still smiling. But yeah, you in survival mode. And so I need to disrupt your roots and show you what true freedom looks like. Because when you disrupt the roots, it looks messy. It doesn't look like perfection. See, this is where the enemy tricks us into making us think freedom is, is perfection. It's all tightly knitted and put together. But freedom is, hey, y'all, this is who I am. <laughs> freedom is I am who I am. And I, I, by the grace of God, I, I can only be me. And sometimes it may look a mess. Sometimes I may look together. But one thing I know is I'm rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ. And so that's what it looks like sometimes. And, and God is saying, but you got to plug back into your source so that I can give you the power that's necessary for you to continue to walk forward and elevate and evolve and blossom. Let's go really quickly to Ephesians 3, 16. If I cough, excuse me. <coughs> Just yesterday, literally. Sickness tried to hit my body, but he ain't going to win. <laughs> Ephesians 3.16, the passing translation. And I believe this scripture so, so well eloquently paints the picture of the movement of grace and, and faith being the capacitor to release the power on us. And it says in the passion translation, and I pray, and I pray that he will unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. And I pray that he would unveil, that he would open your eyes to every unlimited riches of his glory and favor that means that, here's the thing about repositioning, the R-E in repositioning means to repeat over and over again until somebody gets it. So I'm going to keep repeating over and over and over again until your eyes are open to the unlimited riches, until supernatural explosive power is unleashed within the inside of you. I'm going to keep pulling you out until you stand firm in who I called you to be. I'm not going to leave you alone. Hebrews says that he will never relax his hold on us. And so I'm going to hold on to you until you walk according to your purpose, your identity, and your power. Then, after it's unveiled, by constantly, here we go, using your faith, by constantly believing, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you. And the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. I'm disturbing the roots so that Christ can now be the root of your life. 
then, y'all see the transition? Then <laughs> you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences. The great magnitude of the astonishing love of Jesus Christ in all his dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond a measurement that transcends our understanding. Oh, that's some big love. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled and overflowing with the fullness of God. I don't desire to just pick you up, but I'm trying to feel until you overflow with the fullness of God. Oh, how rich. Oh, how deep reaching. I don't know about you, but this is who I want to connect with. I'm tired of connecting with flaky folks. I'm trying to connect with God. How deep, how far reaching. When the last time you seen somebody come pull you up out of, oh my God, out of the depths, out of the pit, out of your darkness. Yeah, they prayed for you, but did they break walls for you? Yeah, they prayed for you, but is it far reaching? Is it, come on, there's something different about this love. I'm talking about somebody who says, I, I just won't, I just can't give up on you. I need you. <laughs> See, that's the thing. <laughs> you thought, oh, you thought you just needed him. No, I need you. I need you to carry my glory. That's why I never counted you out in your brokenness. Because my word says that in those frail clay pots, you carry a glorious treasure on the inside of you. And so you've been waiting on me to plug those holes, but those holes is what's going to reveal my glory. I need you to understand that I want to use you. I want to show you off. See, you've been sitting hidden and disguised and in the background, and you felt like that was your position. No, I'm calling you out because your insecurity is what's going to keep you humble, and that's what's going to keep you dependent on me. And it's in this place. Oh, you thought I was free? Oh, no, I'm still dealing with insecurity. But it's the very reason why I depend on God, because I know that I can't do it in my own strength, but I know that God can use use me, regardless of the emotions that try to come against me. Nothing in this season will be able to stop you. You are a glory carrier of the Most High God. And I'm going to shine and elevate you across all the earth because people will see through your life who God really is. You've been trying to fix yourself. You've been trying to put yourself together. But God says, let me put the pieces together because I want to show you off. I don't want to keep you hidden. I want to show this world the power and love of God. Hold on behind you. I love you so much. Hold on behind you. I can't, I can't leave you wounded. That's not my will. I can't leave you in despair. That's not my will. That's why I made my grace available to you, to restore you when you felt you didn't deserve to be restored. See, you've been blaming yourself. You've been saying, what about me? Why did I do so wrong? God said, it wasn't anything you've done, but I need to step in now. Let me shift your perspective. Let me show you something different in that mirror. Let me show you that all that you have been crying, the tears that you have been pouring out. Let me show you that they were in vain. I am here and I will heal every broken wound. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, I'm here. What am I? At the time you're ready, God says, I'm here. I will heal and restore. I will loose you from everything that has held you captive. That abuse put a muzzle over your mouth. But I command a release right now in the name of Jesus. You will show up. You will speak up. You will no longer be in fear. You will no longer die in this 
this space. And you thought your life was over. You've been looking at your age, and you've been looking at your story, and you thought that this was the end. No, baby, uh-uh. I still have more. I'm still writing a story. My grace has no time limits on it. I'm still coming for you. I'm still breaking for you. I'm still fighting for you. I'm still moving for you. I'm still pounding the pavement for you. I want you. Lord, I'm a, and I want you to live. And I want you to live abundantly. And I want you to live free. Lord, I'm a, I need you. Oh, how I need you. Lord, I'm a, and then the word ends on verse 20. It says, after I've done all of this, after I've done all of this, after I unveiled my unlimited riches and I've shown you my love and I've shown you how intimate and far-reaching my love is, I've, I've shown you that I love you and I care for you, after all of this, now never doubt God's mighty power to work in you to accomplish everything. For he will achieve infinitely more than your, oh, shut up, than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceeds your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly unleashes energy on the inside of you. It gives you everything that you need. Lord, just, 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 just close the iPad, Lord. <laughs> there, the woman in Luke with the issue of blood, God said she was doing everything in her own might, her own will. But one thing that I never miss in the scripture until the revelation of God has given it to me now. Because as I read the scripture, I just think about a woman with the issue of blood who just went to meet Jesus. But if she wouldn't have never been on her way, then she would have bled to death. If she would have stayed in the house, she would have bled to death. And this is what faith in Jesus looks like. It's even when it feels extremely uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Even when you're afraid of the ridicule and the criticism and you're trembling in your bones and your hands are ice cold because you're nervous and your heart is beating extremely at a rapid pace because you're, you're, you're scared. And, this is what it looks like is I know I, I know what I'm feeling and and I don't know what to do but if you could just step out and that's what blooming is all about is this is why you're blooming in grace because it's not about blooming because you now got it all together <laughs> it's never a time where you say okay now I'm ready it's a time where God says no you're ready. But God, I don't feel ready. In fact, I still got this issue and I don't know how to overcome it. And God says, yeah, you still ready. <laughs> God, I'm trying to fix myself and I'll come, I'll come when I feel all put together. No, I, I want you broken, messed up and all. I, 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 I want you in your dysfunction. I, I, I want you in your inadequacy. I, I want you in your inferiority. I, I want you in broken pieces. I, I want you. I want you in shambles. I, I want you straight laid out on the floor and, 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 and confused and overwhelmed. I, I want you. This is how you bloom is when you say, I just, I don't know how and I don't know when. And I'm just going to step out. I'm just going to step out, but God, I don't know. I, I don't know if this is for me. No, baby, can you just trust me? I need you to plug into your grace source. 
and I need you to give me an opportunity to disrupt your roots and show you that where you've been planted has only limited you and made you small. But baby, you are really a giant in the kingdom of God. And I need you to show up and be the giant that I called you to be. So as I'm repositioning you, you can go ahead and break that pot because you ain't going back. No, I'm expanding your territory. And where you walking from this moment forward, Everything that I promise you shall receive. Oh, watch me exceed your expectations. Watch me exceed your imagination. Oh, baby, you ain't even been able to think about where I'm about to carry you. This is how you blossom. And it ain't by anything that you can do. It's because you deserve it. Woo! It's because I called you to it. It's because I'm positioning you for it. It's because my grace and favor and mercy has been made available to all those who felt undeserving, unloved, insignificant, unimportant. Watch me move. You just got to be on your way. You just got to be on your way. I'll interrupt. I'll interrupt. I'll interrupt when you least expect it. While you're in transition, I'll interrupt and step in. Baby, you ain't seen nothing yet. Watch your life change. Watch transformation hit your house. Oh, this ain't just for you. This is for your children. This is for your children's children. This is for every generation attached to you. This bloom, this bloom is overflowing. That's why the pot got to be bigger, because it's not just for you. That's why, because I need more room. To bless your family, to bless that family. Oh, watch breakthrough happen in the earth. Because you chose to open your mouth. Where my pot breakers at? Where my pot breakers at? Oh, where the women that said I ain't going back? Where the women that said I ain't going back? It's time to shout up the pots, baby. Where my pot breakers at? I no Oh, you can keep that. I'm I'm walking with God. no I'm trusting God. I know who I am. Whoa. I know. I know who I am. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Hey, glory. I'm a man. Yeah, I'm a man. Oh, I'm a man. Oh, I'm a man. Oh, I'm a Yes, I heard the Spirit of God say, this is restitution. Yeah. This is restitution. What am I? What am I? You've been depleted. This is restitution. You owe this one. Yeah. It's been a long time coming, but I got you, girl. I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. I got you. I got you. You ain't got to walk alone. I got you. I got you. What about you? And so, Father, we thank you. Woo! <laughs> it's just 10 a.m. and you already blooming. Oh, glory. And so, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you that this is just the beginning. Mm. Set a fire in us, God. 
that cannot be contained or calmed. No amount of distraction, defeat, no devil in hell or on this earth will stop this move. For this is a movement of your grace. And you've led us out, oh God, and so we command that the pot is broken and we now are rooted and planted with you. Lead us, oh daddy, lead us, for we are yours. And every woman and even man in this house who received this word, shout amen. Glory be to God. Well, we got a couple more minutes. The Holy Spirit, keep playing, keep playing. Christmas, stay close, please. Some of you need to bring some things to the altar and just let it go and leave it there. Let it go and leave it there. It's a decision. It's a mindset. Let him put you in the pot and in the place that you need to be in. I would do you an injustice if I didn't give you this moment. Those of you who are watching online, perhaps you can just kneel wherever you are. But to lean into this moment, because this is the beginning of a new season for many of you. This is a Kairos moment. This will shift and get you in alignment with what God has already started. We just want to solidify it, create a community of agreement. There is power in this place. There is power in agreement. He says, we're two or three gathered together in my name. He says, he's there in our midst. So you don't have to think that you're alone. So those who have come, just lift your hands up to the Lord. And those of you who are, to stretch your hands towards those who are here. Crystalline, can you come back and pray? Just pray, just flow whatever God tells you to say. When I was in prayer about what's the minister on this morning, God says, my heart's desire is that a revival will hit my women. And when he spoke the word revival, he attached it with fresh wind. And what I hear in my spirit is many of you have been tired. You have felt so frail. You've been feeling disconnected, almost like you're dying. But the Spirit of the Lord said, here, my fresh wind, my fresh wind. I'm going to move on you, but I'm on Sia. I'm restoring you where you have been picked apart and depleted. I'm feeling you. And God, right now, we declare a tsunami of refreshing, a tsunami of energy, a tsunami of strength. 
to overtake this house. We command that your presence, God, will overtake every soul that has been toiling and working alone. God, you are there with them. Remind them that they have strength in Jesus. And God, we thank you for the renewal, God, and the refreshing, God, and the overflow, God, and the filling, God, and the overflow, God, and the filling, God, and the overflow, God, and the filling, God, supernatural strength. Overtake this house. Every person under the sound of my voice, I declare that as they are at this altar, this is an act of surrendering to your Father. And I declare that they lay down every weight that has pressured them, every worry that has burdened them, everything that has kept them stuck, defeated and depleted. We declare that as they lay it down, they pick up determination, they pick up boldness, they pick assurance they pick up confidence they pick up strength god your presence god they move with you have your way god have your way have your way lord have your way lord have your way lord have your way lord we will never be the same. Oh, this ain't just a cliche. I feel this in my spirit. We will never be the same. My mind is renewed. My past is refreshed. I'm in a new position with Christ. I know who I am. I cannot be denied. So I declare, I declare that you take God with you, that you take God with you. You won't leave this altar without God. <laughs> so you might as well go back to your seat laughing and rejoicing and say, you got the right one today. <laughs> You got the right one today. <laughs> Come for me today if you want to. <laughs> Come and distract me today if you want to. <laughs> Come and attack me today if you want to. Baby, you about to get shut down because you messing with the righteousness of God. You messing with God's daughter. I know who I am. Who I am now, <laughs> yes, and I will not be silent. I will always. Woo, shut up, I see her. Here's my worship. Give it to him right now. All of my worship. Receive it. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my worship. 
Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And he all right? Yeah. What a presence. Oh, my, my, my. Y'all want to sing some of that? Sing a little bit of it. Let him speak to you right now. This is the beginning. Let him speak to you right now in a still, small voice. Let him speak in from the inside. Just listen to his voice. He's speaking. I want you to know how much you are loved today. Receive his love, that unfailing, relentless love that is in hot pursuit of you, that loves you no matter what, no matter what you've done, where you've been. Receive your love, God. That unfathomable love, love we can't even comprehend love that we don't earn, the love that we don't deserve, but you give it to us freely. Thank you for never giving up on us, God. Thank you for believing in us, Lord. Thank you for choosing us, God. our hands together. Amen. Amen. So let it be done. So let it be done. The last thing we're going to do is receive our offering. And then we'll let you get some lunch so that you can come right back.
Hopefully you can participate and attend the two o'clock session. And then the seven o'clock session tonight, power packed all day. And just think this is just session one, the first, the first one. You feel different already? You sense the eternal shift on the inside of you? This is only the beginning. You have to ask yourself, what is God up to? Something good? Something powerful? Something eternal? Something monumental? Unexplainable? Miraculous? He's in the mind-blowing business. I'm telling you, you're in the right place at the right time for something good. If you need offering envelopes, just lift up your hand. The ushers will be sure to give you one so that you can have a record of your giving. Of course, there are instructions on the screen if you'd like to text a seed or however you like to give. I'm reminded of the scripture in Mark chapter 4. It talks about the law of seed time and harvest. And before we go there, I want to go to John. What I was thinking about a little earlier is the fact that we just have to decide and set our intention that we're going to do and receive everything that God is endeavoring to do in our lives. It's pretty much what it has to take place in order for us to experience everything that Chrislyn shared with us. Don't you appreciate the gift of God on the inside of her? What a mighty, powerful, grace-filled gift. Burden-removing, yoke-destroying, uplifting. And so, he says, um, I think it was the man at the pool of Bethesda. When he was laying there, the Bible says he was an impotent man. So in other words, he couldn't walk. And God said, um, observed everything that was going on between the impotent man and the others who were getting their breakthrough, who were getting their healing, who were getting the manifestation and I love that Jesus came right in the midst of them, just like he's right here with the midst, in the midst of us. And he asked them a question. And I'm going to ask you the same question this morning. He asked him, he said, do you want to be well? No more time for playing the victim game. No more time for pity parties. No more time for feeling sorry for ourselves. Nobody's coming to the pity party. He says, do you want to be well? So we have to make up our mind. We have to make a decision. Decision is a quality that we're willing to sign our name on. On March the 14th, 2024, I decided that I wasn't going back to my past. Wasn't going back to making excuses, believing the lies, just believing things that weren't true. He says, do you want to be well? So I asked you that question this morning. Do you want your situations to change? Because how many of you know he'll meet us at our point of need? And so change happens when there's an exchange between us and God. And so this opportunity that we have to sow seed is for us to sow and believe the things that we heard this morning. We're going to make the series available because you didn't get everything <laughs> in this one sitting. I can tell you that. I'm going to go back and listen and listen and listen 
and listen. So much revelation. What we heard is just pregnant, it's full. We need to hear it again and again. And so today, what a great day to decide that this day will be the beginning of the rest of my life. And so we thank God that he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And he says, as long as the earth remains, there'll be what? Seed time and harvest. So let's plant this morning. Let's sow seed this morning on what we heard. Let's put it in the ground. Let's believe God for those things that we know are available for each and every one of us. So let's lift up our devices. Let's lift up our seeds. Let's water it with the word of God. Oh, God. He says, come unto you and give unto you the glory that is due unto your name and to bring an offering. God, there's no way that we can give you what you deserve. We can only give you a portion of all that you've done for us. So we offer our seeds unto you in gratitude and appreciation for your goodness. We know that we wouldn't be here this morning if it were not for you. And so, Father, thank you that you're our provider. You're Jehovah Jireh. You see the need, and you provide for every need that's represented in this place. And we thank you, Father, that it's already done. You are our source. You are our supply. So we take comfort in knowing that it's already done. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all that agree said, amen. Go ahead and sow your seed. And uh, let's see. We got... couple of reminders. Shuttles are running to the hotels, which are going to be taking you back and forth if you want to go for lunch. There are also food trucks that are across the street over behind our junior and senior high building. There'll be greeters to direct you to those areas and uh, Next level lunch is in the fellowship hall. There should be a campus map out in the lobby on the screen. And then the VIP lunch will be located in the walkthrough. But let's go and prepare ourselves to reset for what God has planned for us the rest of the day. Did you enjoy yourself? Yes. Praise God. Everybody had a chance to give? I see ushers. Let's see. I think we have. All right. God bless you. See you at 2. Enjoy your lunch. <laughs>